Welcome. I'm Dr. Liz, an entrepreneur, speaker, podcaster, mom, and wife. This podcast is about hypnosis, but also about all kinds of ways to help you live your fullest life, to heal, transform, to play the long game and go after the joy. You can see more about me at drlizhypnosis.com. Hop over there to get a free hypnosis file to decrease fear and anxiety or one to increase emotional stability. They're there just for you. I hope you enjoy the podcast as much as I do. Peace. Hi, everyone. Dr. Liz here. Today, we're going to talk about radical acceptance and radical organizing, what they are and what to do about them. Now, the phrase radical organizing just totally makes me laugh because I was working with someone who I introduced the concept of radical acceptance to, and he's like, radical acceptance? What about radical organizing? He had this British accent, and it just sounded hysterical when he said it, like sort of the opposite of just acceptance. Like, oh no, he goes into motion, right? He like organizes when something happens to um, be able to handle it and deal with it and all of that good stuff. So I loved that. I really did. Um, I have a raccoon coming into my house right now. First time this happened, I was in Italy with my kids and my husband was like, I think we have a problem. I thought it was with one of the cats or the dog or something like that. And he's like, oh no, a gigantic raccoon came into the house and rummaged around the cat food and tried to get into the dog food and all this stuff. And I was like, oh my God. So we do have a pet door. The pet door is not for the dog. It's actually for one of the cats, Hazel, because she always wants to go in and out and in and out and in and out. And so finally I got her a pet door and this works great for her. So the raccoon came in through the pet door. That's how it's coming in. He put the, um, you can close the pet door. So he closed it a day or two and then opened it back up and we just sort of forgot about it until last night and the night before. So both of those nights, I woke up in the morning and the cat food was sort of a mess and dirt seemed to be everywhere. And I thought it was the kitten, kitten Susu, who had done all this and I just cleaned it up. Well, this morning it had happened again and the water that's on the floor for the dog was also super dirty. And then I noticed there were tracks everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, those are not kitten paw prints. Those are raccoon prints. And I was like, ah, like, what are we going to do here? Now, this is sort of a humorous problem, I think. Okay. But this is how we're going to look at these things. Um, first step is to accept that it's happening. Like, oh my God, I have a raccoon problem now. That's radical acceptance. I am not fighting reality. I'm not pretending it's not happening. I am I'm not blaming it on another animal. I am simply like, oh, I have a raccoon problem. I've got to do something about it. Then once I can accept that, I move into organizing. Like, what am I going to do? I'm going to put the pet door on. Um, do I need to get a live trap so the animal isn't harmed, but it's taken away somewhere else, not in my neighborhood. So it doesn't come into my house anymore. At one point I said, maybe I should put cat food outside for it. And my husband was like, no, that is like not a great idea. Okay, you're gonna feed the raccoon and other animals in the in the neighborhood. Like, no, that raccoon will never stop coming here if you do that. I said, okay. Um, so we're just like tossing around ideas going into what to do about this problem. That's radical organizing. But let's look at radical acceptance. Now, this concept actually comes from the world of Buddhism. That's where its roots are. In the concept that suffering comes not directly from pain, but also one's attachment to the pain. Now, the intention here is to not allow pain to turn into suffering. And we do that with radical acceptance of what's going on. 
Now, I obviously talked about a very funny example, a raccoon coming into the house. Oh, and by the way, it went into my daughter's bedroom because there's a little bowl of cat food in there. It's kitten food um, for Sisu Kitten because sometimes we have to put her in the bedroom if the big cat wants to come in um, when it's rainy or something like that. Anyway, the raccoon went into my daughter's bedroom and ate the food in there too and drank the water and made the the water really dirty. And that part sort of freaked me out. Like, all right, raccoon in the house. All right, raccoon in my daughter's bedroom. I'm not really cool with this. Okay, (laughs) so um, back to the point here. What we do with radical acceptance is we accept, okay, this thing is going on. Painful events happen in our lives. We cannot avoid them. This doesn't mean that we agree with what happened or bad behavior of others or that we're um, condoning it, nothing like that. In fact, in the Roots of Buddhism, they say, When people are behaving in a way that threatens your needs or threatens your safety, you should, of course, empathize and try to understand, but you're also obligated to seek justice. We're going to take a little tangent here. I I worked a lot with anger and anger management in the past, and there's a wonderful book on anger by Pima Shadron, who's also a Buddhist monk. And in that book, she says sometimes the kindest thing that we can do is to stop someone from continuing to act out on us, from continuing to harm us. It's actually kind to not just ourselves, but to them as well. Like we're not going to participate in creating violence anymore, creating this bad karma that's going on anymore. But to be able to do that, you first got to accept that that shit's going down, right? (laughs) Like this is happening. If you never move to that, step, then you really can't move into radical organizing. You can't move into action to change things. Now, in my practice, I do work with people going through some really painful events, some more than others. And sometimes it's really difficult for them to accept these painful events. I sometimes get referred tinnitus or tinnitus cases by an audiologist because CBT and hypnosis is effective for that. But part of the process is really radically accepting that this is going on, that they have ringing in their ears that isn't going away. So we accept reality as it is. We accept that there's limitations for everyone. We accept everything has a cause, including events and situations that cause you pain and suffering. And then we accept that life can be worth living even with painful events in it. Now, obviously, if someone decides to take their own life, they've decided that life is not worth living even with painful events in it. They've decided, I'm out of here. Life is too painful, actually. But when we're not making that decision, then we are saying, okay, how do I organize so that life is worth living? even with painful events in it, even with things that have happened in the past that I don't like, even with things that are happening right now that I don't like. So we are getting more into the DBT handout and concept of radical acceptance, dialectical behavior therapy. I am trained in DBT. And originally DBT was developed for people who are suicidal and who are BPD, borderline personality disorder. It's been applied now to all kinds of different areas, addiction, eating disorders, all kinds of stuff, because it is so useful. I use it in my practice all the time, even when someone is not a borderline. A very small percentage of my practice are borderlines, but I use this concept all the time. And again, roots are in Buddhism. Now, there's factors that interfere in us doing this. We don't have the skills for acceptance. We don't know how to accept really painful events and facts, or we believe that if we accept it, we're making light of it or approving of the facts, or perhaps that nothing will be done to change or prevent future painful events. So we just talked about that a couple of minutes ago, that accepting that something happened doesn't actually mean that we're approving of it or that we cannot act ourselves to prevent it in the future. A third factor is that emotions get in the way. 
So sadness, anger, rage at the injustice of the world, overwhelming shame about who we are, or perhaps guilt about our behavior. So emotions sometimes do get in the way of us moving into a sense of radical acceptance. Um, there was a, a tinnitus case where the guy was blaming himself because he had gone diving. And that's what and that's when it started. And so he is super angry at himself that he'd gone diving. It's like, even though that's not something that anybody could have predicted would have happened to him. So when we get stuck in those feelings, then we don't actually move to radical organizing. We also don't move to radical acceptance. Now, sometimes it's a, a back and forth process is what I've seen in my practice. This is not like linear, like, oh, do this, this, and this, and you're in radical acceptance. Absolutely not. This is a process that goes back and forth in your mind that... You have to practice over and over and over again. You don't have to. You can choose to practice over and over and over again until it becomes a little bit easier for you. Before you move to the steps, actually, how do you know you're not in radical acceptance? It's a good question. Yeah. You're not in radical acceptance when you're continuing to fight reality, when you're throwing like emotional tantrums because reality isn't the way you want it to be, when you're stuck in bitterness or resentment, you're not accepting reality. And those states really don't feel good to people. It's really a process of checking in with yourself, whether you're fighting reality so fighting reality in the case of the dentist was like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's fighting reality. You cannot change the past. What's present right now is it did happen. You did go diving. You do have tinnitus. Fighting reality in my raccoon case would be, hmm, let me pause here for a moment. Let's see, what would be fighting reality in my raccoon case? I think that would be like pretending it's just not happening. Like I'm going to continue to get up every single morning and clean up the raccoon mess. <laughs> Pretend it's not happening. Or saying, well, if that cat wasn't obsessed with going in and out and I didn't have the pet door, this would have never happened. That's fighting reality. I have a cat. I put in a pet door for her. Thank God. <laughs> because it's like saved my sanity. And now I have a new problem because of the pet door. That's radical acceptance. When we get into our minds and pretend that something's real, that's not. So I can think of some really painful situations when you lose someone, something like that, where you can really get into your mind and into pretending. This is not that stage of grief where you think you see them somewhere. That's a common thing that happens with grief. And I remember after my father died when I was 18, I would like see him driving a car, you know, I'd be driving along my own car and look over and be like, that's my dad. And then it's like, no, that, you know, obviously it wasn't my dad. <laughs> I had to admit that again and again, that's not my dad. I'm never going to see my dad again. Oh, I'm getting a little teary here. <laughs> I don't know why this made me cry. I've given that example lots of times, but I think I just remember that feeling of wanting him alive so much when I was young. And also the pain of having to accept that again and again, that he was never coming back. I was never going to see him again. So we can apply this to like horrible events happening to people, which is why sometimes people get suicidal. That is actually the first time in my life that I got suicidal was after he died. And I remember just being in my bedroom and staring at the ceiling fan and watching it go around and around and thinking, I think it would just be better to die myself. I did not end up attempting. I've been suicidal several times in my life. I've never attempted. But suicidal feelings are a place when you feel stuck. You're questioning, is life worth living? Is this event so painful that I don't want to live anymore? I'm really deciding that. But when you don't accept reality, when you don't accept that something has happened, you really get stuck in sadness, deep sadness, suicidality sometimes, shame, unhappiness, bitterness. You get stuck. 
Okay, so what was I saying? Um, that this is not the same as, like wanting to change the past is not the same as like the stage of grief where you think you're seeing somebody <laughs> that's not actually there. That's actually, again, pretty common um, that people move through. That's not typically rejecting reality. That's just something that our mind does to us. But the first step we do is that we observe that we're questioning or fighting reality. So we're moving into the steps now. How do we practice radical acceptance? What do we actually do? You know, I had covered like half this handout um, with one of my clients once and we ran out of time. And um, sometimes I wish sessions were like, let's schedule three hours and just see how long it takes us. (laughs) You know, Um, with hypnosis, I actually do schedule two to three hours because I'm not quite sure how much it's time is going to take us. But typically with a talk session, it's like, oh, 45 minutes or a 60 minute session, we're done. But we're not always done. It is frustrating sometimes as a therapist to to feel like we're not done. We only got halfway through this. And now what do we do? We have to wait till next week to do this. He had emailed me in between and said, okay, now I observe that I'm fighting reality all the time. I'm wishing that this didn't happen to me, that I don't have this. What do I do? And I was like, oh, well, you need the second half of the handout. (laughs) So we are moving into the second half of the handout, practicing radical acceptance step by step. First, we observe that we're questioning or fighting reality. We feel like it shouldn't be this way. When that pops up in our mind, we immediately say, oh, I'm questioning reality. (laughs) I am not in radical acceptance. We remind ourselves that the unpleasant reality is just as it is and cannot be changed. This is what happened. That's hard sometimes. really is. We remind ourselves that there's causes for the reality. Some kind of history led up to that very moment that that happened. Now, it may not be your history, it may be somebody else's history that led up to that moment, but things happened. That's how it happened. Then we move into, you can use relaxation, mindfulness of breath, grounding, saying, I am here right now. This did happen. You can use prayer. You can uh, use imagery. We really practice accepting with the whole self that this happened and we are in a painful place and we're moving through this. Like, yeah, this hurts, it's painful. And it did happen. So when we're doing that, we're attending to body sensations as we think about what we need to accept. We're allowing feelings to come up. We're not suppressing feelings here. We're allowing feelings to come up within us. We're acknowledging, I'm still choosing to live right now, even though there's pain here still choosing to live. This isn't a question for some people. (laughs) Like they never have suicidal thoughts, which I find pretty amazing actually. But for those of us that do and consider it a legitimate way out sometimes, then that is part of radical acceptance saying, okay, I am choosing right now to live. Choosing not to off myself right in this moment. Choosing to go on. And you can do a pros and cons if you find yourself resisting practicing acceptance. You can do that in your head, you can write them out, whatever it is. So we're doing all of that. We're not, um, we're not denying our own reality that's happening. But then there's a couple of things that are a little more active that we can do. I mean, relaxation, mindfulness of your breath, prayer, Some of those feel active, some that feel sort of like semi-active to me. It could be a very active process to do that, or it can feel a little less active. But another active process is practicing opposite action. This is a DBT concept that is often useful. You list all the behaviors you would do if you did accept the facts. Then you act as if you have already accepted the facts. So you engage in those behaviors that you would do if you really had accepted that this had happened. Let's talk about a breakup. Like someone goes through a breakup and they're really struggling with it and they don't want to accept it and they do want to reach out. Maybe they even do reach out and continue to text or try to contact the person who's like, hey, this is done and please don't contact me. 
oh, this is reminding me I dreamed about my ex-boyfriend last night. No wonder I, I woke up in a slightly like agitated state. I'm just remembering right now that, yeah, I dreamed about him. And he was someone who stalked me for like two years after I had said I went no contact with you. Um, that's why it's coming up in this very moment. <laughs> And the dream was that I was with my kids and I saw him and he was out with somebody and I did not talk to him. Like my kids said hello, but I actually walked away. That was the dream. Anyway, let's say this is happening to you and you do have the urge to contact or do this or or ruminate about the past or think about if I had done this different, then maybe we'd still be together. That's not radical acceptance. That's out of radical acceptance. So we engage in the behaviors that we would do if we really had accepted it. Meaning what I would do if I accepted that breakup is I would pretend that person is off limits. I would do something to take care of myself. And depending how far out you are from it, perhaps you start dating again. Perhaps you go to therapy and give yourself a little break from dating But the thing you don't do is contact them, pretend that you're in a relationship with them. I mean, even let's say you see something that you know that they would love, like a gift or something, you acknowledge that, you don't buy it. Buying it would be non-radical acceptance, okay? (laughs) Really. Um, You just acknowledge that the feeling has come up. Yes, sometimes you miss them. If you don't know what opposite action is for something, it is a quick Google, okay? dbt.tools, D D as in David, B as in boy, T as in Tom, dbt.tools. It has it all there for you. It is all free because these are such amazing skills that I think people want you to have. You can also buy the workbook off, off of Amazon if you really want to keep it with you. But if you really don't know opposite action, you can Google that up and say, okay, what's the opposite action of depression is get active. Opposite action of anger is kindness, concern. Sometimes it's to walk away from something. Opposite action of sadness, it's same as depression, is to get active. Our action urge is to withdraw and isolate. And the opposite action is actually to get active and to go out in life, perhaps socialize some, something like that. Again, another skill you can use is practice opposite action. Another way to do this is to practice radical acceptance in smaller moments so that it's easier in bigger moments. I have a handout that I'd be happy to send you. It's Radical Acceptance Coping Statements. And really, if you email me, drliz at drlizhypnosis.com, I will send you this handout, (laughs) okay? No problem at all. No charge for it, totally free. Or if you even wanna talk through something, I offer a free consultation, 15 minutes. Usually that's for new clients. I have had people schedule in the past just to talk through a situation. I'm okay with that. I love to give service and I consider that service. Just let me know in the notes if you do that. But Radical Acceptance Coping Statements gives you different ways to practice. So some of the phrases you can use is this is the way it has to be for now. I can't change what's already happened. The present is the only moment I have control over. This moment is exactly as it should be given what's happened before it. Now, that one's hard for people. I mean, think about losing a parent or a child or something, someone close to you. You do not feel like that's as it should be. But given what's happened before it, it's like, yeah, all kinds of factors happened that led to that moment. So that sort of goes into the spiritual realm. Spirituality is a good tool for you. If you're into that, prayer, saying, okay, this is God's plan or the universe's plans, or I don't understand why this had to happen right now, but I'm going to assume that it is part of my journey. That's been really helpful for me personally. I don't believe in a a patriarchal God. I say it's my uh, freaky deaky woo woo higher power (laughs) is how I call it. But sometimes when painful things have happened, it's like, all right, I am on my journey here. I don't understand why this is happening or has happened, but I'm going to trust that it's part of my journey of growth. 
So the handout I give you just um, gives you a little little practice things to do. Like next time you're in heavy traffic, try wait without being critical of anything or anyone around you. You know, I was listening to the the Rob Bell podcast the other day, which I like to listen to from time to time. And he made the point that when you're stuck in traffic, you are the traffic too. Like you're the traffic to somebody else. Okay. <laughs> like you're like, I know in South Florida, we have awful traffic, but there's, you know, awful traffic all around the world. Right. I don't assume that I'm, I'm special down here in South Florida. Although my friend did visit from Seattle and uh, validated it for me. She's like, oh, no, it's bad. It's bad here. And, and what's with the drivers like backing up on the highway and all kinds of stuff? I'm like, yeah, it's crazy. But next time you're in traffic, remember, you're part of the traffic. You're somebody else's aggravation by being in your car as part of the traffic. But try to wait without being critical of anything or anyone around you particularly if there's no uh, back route. I'm a big fan of knowing the back route, but sometimes I get stuck on I-95. There is no way off. The only thing I can do is wait. So I try to practice radical acceptance. I put on a podcast or some music. The only thing I can do there is just be in the present moment. Breathe, keep calm, wait, inch forward, inch by inch until I get to where I'm going. There's no way out. You can also try just stating the facts without judgment. An example of this would be years ago, I went to an art museum with my daughters. They didn't talk the whole time. Judgment would be we had a horrible time. Facts are they didn't talk the whole time. That didn't actually happen to me. Usually my kids are talking and telling me, um, about what they want to do or don't want to do or something. (laughs) But that's a good example of not putting the judgment on it. When you move into putting the judgment on it, you can observe the suffering that it does cause. You can observe what happens to your body. Do you get activated? Do you feel shut down? Those are signs that perhaps you're not in radical acceptance. Sometimes it means you are in radical acceptance, though. So don't get me wrong. Sometimes you get activated. Something bad happens. You get activated. And it's like, this this is going to change. I am going to be part of this change. That's activation. That's activation. That's not denying reality. All right. Final thing we're going to cover is turning the mind. This is a very concrete skill you can use at any time even when stuck in traffic, okay? Turning the mind is like facing a fork in the road. You have to turn your mind toward the acceptance road, away from the road of rejecting reality. And again, it doesn't itself equal acceptance of what happened. It just puts you on the path. So first we observe that we're not accepting. Look for anger, bitterness, annoyance, avoiding emotions, saying, why me? Why is this happening? I can't stand this. It shouldn't be that way. All of those are, oh, I'm not in radical acceptance. Go within yourself. Make an inner commitment to accept reality as it is. Three, step three, do it again, over and over. So you keep turning your mind to accept each time you come to the fork in the road where you can reject it or accept it. And then step four, develop a plan for catching yourself in the future when you drift out of acceptance. This is a good example. Back to the ex-boyfriend. I was teaching yoga at the time and I used to take the turnpike home. If I turned left, I'd go to his house. If I turned right, I'd go to my house. It was slightly triggering for me (laughs) to be at that intersection. So my plan was I'm going to have to take a different highway. It's going to take me a little bit longer to get home. That was actually radical acceptance for me. I'm accepting that that intersection is hard, that I have an urge to turn left instead of right. So instead, I'm going to do something completely different so that I'm not out of radical acceptance, so that I am in radical acceptance. Radical acceptance is this relationship was not good for me. I ended it and I'm doing something different now. That's it. So that's like a concrete example. You can apply this to thoughts. Um, you've probably heard me talk about this on the podcast before. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but an example of this is I used to walk the dog in the morning and start thinking about my ex-husband, how awful he was. <laughs> 
<laughs> it sounds funny to me now because now um, we get along pretty much, much better than we had in, in years past. And so one day I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing here? This is not good for anybody. It's not good for the dog. It's not good for my ex-husband. It's not good for my kids. It's not good for me. So I thought, all right, now the next time that thought comes and I'm walking the dog, which our minds are minds of habit, it's going to come up. I am going to immediately turn my mind to something else that feels better. How beautiful the trees are. How wonderful the dog is. What a beautiful day it is. Maybe I'll even think of my like own peaceful place, which is this beautiful place in California. I will consciously choose to turn my mind to something that feels healthier. And I really believe that that is part of us moving towards a a better relationship with each other is that I was not thinking bad thoughts of him every single morning. After a while, that became very natural to not even think about him in the morning, just thinking about something else. But it took a conscious effort to, one, move into radical acceptance. He is who he is. He has done things that I didn't like in the past. And two, turn my mind. Now, opposite action may have been even thinking of like good things that he did. I didn't go that far, you guys. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) But that would be a good opposite action. (laughs) All the wonderful things he's done for me in the past. (laughs) But you know, we were together, I don't know, 15 years or so. So there's plenty of wonderful things he did along along with the awful. But I decide to just think about something else completely. (laughs) I hope this helps you understand radical acceptance. I know it is not always an easy concept to get, particularly when you very first hear about it. But I think it is an extremely useful concept for our lives. As well as radical organizing. So once you are in radical acceptance, then eventually you'll have the energy to radically organize around changing your circumstances, around making them better for yourself, uh, physically, emotionally, maybe in your work environment, maybe your home, maybe who you're with, all of that good stuff becomes available to you once you have radical acceptance. Okay, people, hope you're healthy and safe and that you have a wonderful week. Peace. I hope you truly enjoyed today's episode. Remember that you can get free hypnosis downloads over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. I work all over the world doing hypnosis. So if you're interested in working with me, please schedule a free consultation over at my website and we'll see what your goals are and if I can be of service to you in helping you reach them. Finally, if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the podcast or tell a friend. That way, more and more people learn about the power of hypnosis. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Peace. This podcast is not mental health treatment, nor should it replace mental health treatment. If you need therapy or hypnotherapy, please seek treatment from a trained professional.